In this video, we'll be showing you how to execute a Fivetran sync, then download a query from Snowflake. Let's dive in. Let's start off inside of our fleet builder inside of Shipyard. So our fir the first step of this fleet is going to be executing our Fivetran sync. So we're going to search for our Fivetran blueprints here in our fleet builder. Uh, so we're going to click execute sync. And so what that's going to do is it's going to create a vessel for us here on the fleet builder. It's also going to pop up an opportunity for you to uh, access our Fivetran authorization guide, which is going to show you how to find the API key and API secret. Uh, that we're going to use in just a second. I'm going to close that for right now and name this vessel execute sync. And then grab my API key and API secret. And then grab my connector ID. Okay. So as, as well as all the inputs that you can put in for each vessel, you can also set up notification email notifications uh, for any error that occurs or any completion of an on demand run. Um, and then also you can set up guardrails for number of retries, time between retries, and then runtime cutoff as well. Um, so that's our first vessel. So that's going to kick off our sync inside of Fivetran. And so now we want to use a, another vessel that's going to go back and check the sync status. Uh, so that's what we'll name this vessel, check sync status. Uh, and then we're going to grab our API key and API secret as well. And we can leave our connector ID blank because we're going to connect those together here. Uh, after a success. So what this what this flow is going to do here is it's going to start the sync inside of Fivetran, and then the second vessel is going to check to see whenever that whenever that sync is completed. Um, and so it's gonna it's gonna start and then go check Fivetran. So if it's finished, it's going to return a complete. Uh, if it's not finished, it's going to return an error, and it's going to reset and then try again until Fivetran sends it either that sync was an error uh, or it's completed. So up my retries here as well. Okay. Uh, so now what we want to do is we want to set up a Snowflake vessel so we can store our query results as a CSV. Um, so we're going to name that store query results as CSV here uh, and then just grab all the information that we need uh, to log in. Password, copy and paste that in. Our account name, our warehouse database schema, and then I'm just going to use a sample query here uh, with some filters on it as well. Um, and I'm going to limit this just to save some time. So we're going to limit that to 100. Uh, and then we'll just call this test.csv test just for this. It, if this is in production, you'd obviously name that something uh, more specific. Uh, we'll leave our column headers, our column names as headers. Uh, so lastly, we just want to connect those together here after a success. Um, and the last thing we want to do before we run this fleet is we want to name it. So we're going to name this uh, Fivetran to Snowflake. So now that our fleet's named, we can click Save and Finish. Um, so this is going to pop us up to a new page. It's going to say the fleet has been created successfully, as you see here. Uh, and now we can just click Run Your Fleet, and it'll kick off. Um, so after you click that Run Your Fleet, that's going to start an on-demand run inside of Shipyard. Um, so that's one way to start any fleet run is you can do a, a on-demand run, but we also have uh, two other ways that you can start a fleet run, um, and that's with our triggers. So you have we have scheduled triggers, so you can schedule this fleet to run uh, based on the hour, based on the day, the month, or the week. Um, and then we also have an API trigger as well that you can call the API, uh, and it'll, click, it'll kick off the fleet as well. Uh, so you can see that we've been taken to the fleet log page here. Um, and you can see the execute sync is already finished. So if I click on that, it's going to show the output here. Um, and you can see that it took in the variables that we set and then also hid the API key and API secret. So not anyone can can just log in to uh, your shipyard and look and see what those values are. But you can also see that it, it, it tells us that the sync has been successfully triggered for that connector. And I can even look inside of Fivetran. And if I refresh this, um, it's going to show that it's syn uh, syncing data here. So it's definitely kicked off and it's running. Uh, so then go back to our fleet log. And so you'll see this check sync status is doing what I mentioned earlier, uh, where it's going to start, it's going to check, uh, and you can see it turned red. So that means that the sync is still running. Uh, and then it'll retry until uh, it either gets the error um, or it gets a completion. Uh, so we'll allow that to run until it finished, until that sync is finished and the downstream process or the downstream vessel can start. Okay, so you can see the sync status is complete now. Uh, so now our store query results as CSV vessel is kicking off. Um, and so you can see that loading. I can click into that to show the output as it's as it's running here. Uh, 
And so since it's just starting, we don't have any output just yet. But as it um, as, as it as it begins running, you can see here that it set the environment variables that we mentioned from before. Um, and now you can see that it's successful and that it tells us that we successfully stored the query results as test.csv. Uh, so it grabbed those values and stored it inside of Shipyard here. Um, so what you can do with that, so you can take that CSV and you can store, you can you know use the, um, the the blueprints that we have inside of Shipyard to take it to Google Drive, to take it to Dropbox or Box, uh, and take it to a cloud data storage. Uh, you can also use our email or Slack uh, blueprints to send that file directly to any of your stakeholders immediately um, as soon as it's ready to go. Um, or you can use it, you can use some custom Python code to run some uh, analysis on it as well. Um, so in this video, we showed how to execute a five trend sync and then store, uh, store a, a Snowflake query as a CSV as soon as that five trend sync is over. If you have any questions about this solution or any other potential solution, use the link in the description to set up a time to chat with our team of data experts. You can go to shipyardapp.com to start building powerful workflows just like this for free. Want to see us tackle more solutions? Check out these related videos.